Give me the cash. Eleven passengers at two dollars a head, sir. Ten. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 50, 75, 85, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 22 dollars. That's right. Are you the owner of this ferry? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I don't mind a man making a reasonable profit in his business. But this thing has gone entirely too far. Listen, mister, in my business, I gotta charge all the traffic will bear. Two dollars from Staten Island is nothing but out-and-out out piracy. It is? Well, what are you gonna do about it? Nothing right now. But someday I may be in position to do something about it. Horace. Hi, sir. Who is that man? Do you know him? He's a real estate man from uptown. John Jacob Astor. Oh, uh... Hey, Horace, did you uh, get that little thing for me? Aye, Commodore. Fine, I'm going over to the Bull's Head. I'll be back in time for the next trip. Aye, aye, Commodore. Aye, aye, Commodore! I will! Aye, aye, Commodore! Look up here! Hi there, Thomas! Did you buy them Spanish boots for me? No. I couldn't get into Spain on account of the British blockade. I'll get in for the next trip. If you touch France, pick me up a turban with a feather on it. It's for a lady. Sure. I'll even pick you up a lady. <laughs> hey, hey. Careful up there. It's only water, Commodore. Hello, Liz. What are you doing with water? Hiya, Commodore. Hiya, Jonathan. Glad to see you back. How's the wife? Fine. They had her on the trip with me. Do you run into a hurricane? Yes, hit us around the horn. How'd the old tub take it? All right, except she got a little seasick. What you doing down there? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? You need some help? I would if you came down. You old rascal, you. Where have you been? I ain't seen you in a couple of days. Well, I've been busy. Have you missed me? Sure, I've been pining away for you. You ought to be ashamed neglecting me like this. Oh, Pat, you're just saying that because you know I fetched you something. Did you really? Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, the Essex dropped anchor from England this morning, and I bought this off of one of the crew. Oh, a real lady's fan. Just what I've always wanted. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, yes, you do. Well, all right, that's another kiss I owe you. Oh, Pat, sometimes I think you're just teasing me along, but I like it. Oh, I wouldn't tease you, Commodore. You're too smart, big man of affairs like you. Say, how's the ferry boat business coming along? Oh, all right, I guess. I got that Staten Island service all to myself now. No more competition? Competition? No, it just disappeared all of a sudden, like. And I can't imagine why. Your busting a few competitor skulls couldn't have anything to do with it, or could it? Well, I never thought of that. I heard the last fellow that tried to run his ferry boat had to swim back from Staten Island. Oh, no, he didn't. I picked him up about halfway. Yeah, and made him pay full fare. Well, you didn't expect me to row him back for nothing, did you? Well, I gotta be going. It's about time for the next ferry trip. Oh, but Commodore! You didn't pay me for that ale. What ale? Three months, that'll be nine cents. Pat, you'll never die poor. Commodore, in my business, I have to charge all the traffic will bear. Mm -hmm. Who is it? <laughs> what do you think? How many times have I told you if you want to kiss me, you got to ask me first? I'm in a hurry. <laughs> oh, feeling kind of cocky today, ain't you? Don't tell me you're going to raise and pay. Raise nothing. Regan's going to make me a partner. A partner? He's got to. I'm running that whole shipyard for him, and he knows it. So you may as well name the wedding day, Wentz. Well, what do you say? Three cents. Oh, Pat, how long are you going to keep putting me off? What do 
I want to marry you for anyway? I'm making more money than you are. But I'm telling you, Regan promised. You think I want to be running a tavern all my life? I've got ambitions. The man I marry will have to support me in style. I want to be a lady and live in a mansion and ride in a coach. And wear a bustle. Ain't you wearing one? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I... Oh, I'm awful sorry, sir. I didn't mean to hit you. It was his fault for ducking. <laughs> it's quite all right. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. What do you have, sir? A brandy? No, thank you. I've just arrived on the Essex, and I'm looking for lodgings. I guess you want the city hotel up on Broadway. How do you know he does? I have some lovely rooms upstairs. Very reasonable. Grand view of the harbor, quiet, restful, and respectable, too. Ain't they, Mr. Brown? Oh, sure. I've been living here two years, and I ain't been shanghai yet. That's more than you can say for some of the other dumps along here. Well, I'm not looking for anything very elaborate, and I've got to be on the waterfront. Could I trouble you to show me one of your rooms? <laughs> no trouble at all. Right this way, sir. To you, madam. Thank you. Just leave the luggage here. Thank you, sir. Noah, watch the grog room till I come down. Yes, ma'am. And Noah, don't let me catch you drinking my rum or I'll drown you in it. Who, me, Miss Pan? Yes, you. <laughs> right this way, sir. So quaint, these donkeys, don't you think? This is the very best room we have in the tavern, sir. Won't you step in? After you. Thank you. You get a fresh pitcher of water every day and your door locks from the inside. The sheets are changed twice a week, whether they need them or not. If you ever want to take a bath, just give me a day's notice. I'm sure I shall be very comfortable here. And your rates? Two fifty a week or eight dollars a month. I think I'd better take it by the month. Fine. Uh, would you pay me now or after you unpack? Pay you now, if you prefer. Thank you. It ain't that I don't trust you, sir. I can see you're a real gentleman, but I've been fooled before. Well, what I meant to say was it's the rule of the house. Quite all right. I understand perfectly. Well, I'll send no up with your bags. If there's anything you want, just... What's that? A new kind of a coffee grinder? No. It's a new kind of a boat. A boat? Yes. Where are the sails? He doesn't need any. No sails? No. And I warn you, don't get me started talking about it. Go ahead, I'm a good listener. Oh, no, you don't. What's the matter? We'll just leave the door open. But I was only getting you a chair. Oh, I, I thought... Well, you see, I, I hardly know you. My name's Fulton, Robert Fulton. What's your name? Pat. Uh, Patricia. Patricia O'Day. How do you do, Miss O'Day? Oh, I'm delighted, Mr. Fulton. Now, won't you come over here and sit down? Mm-hmm. Now, tell me more about your thingamabob here, whatever it is, huh? It's a boat. Oh, yes, a boat. Boat without sails. I can see how it works. You have the windmills here instead, instead of the, the sails. And, and when the wind blows, the mill goes round and round. <laughs> no? No, that isn't quite the idea. The wind has nothing whatever to do with it. Have you ever watched a tea kettle boil and seen the steam lift the lid? I know it's a tea kettle. It's a boat, a steamboat. Oh. First of all, you build a fire right under the boiler here. A fire on the deck? Certainly, you can't have steam without a fire. 
Oh, you can't, huh? Of course not. This is how it works. This piston is coupled to the crankshaft by this bell crank and that connecting rod. Then this gearing connects the crankshaft to the paddle wheel shaft, mm -hmm. which in turn controls the paddle wheels. And the paddle buckets dipping in the water propel the boat forward like this. Mm -hmm. Of course, with steam generating the power in the boiler, the process is reversed. Mm -hmm. And that's all there is to it. It's really very simple. Well, what makes it go? The steam, of course. Oh. No sails. No sails. How long are you going to be stopping here, Mr. Fulton? At least until I get my boat built. You mean you're going to build a big one like that? That's what I came here for. Oh. Well, if you'll excuse me, I... got to get back to the grog room. Somebody walks off with me. Yes, ma'am, right away. Noah! Yes, ma'am? There's three drinks of rum gone. That's right, Miss Pat. Three rums and two ales, and there's the money in the cash box. Yes, ma'am. That scalawag's been drinking my rum, and I can't figure out how he's doing it. Hey, what kept you upstairs so long? The swell didn't try nothing, did he? I should say not. He's a polite, upstanding, honest gentleman. But crazy's a loon. Crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. Hiya, boss. Hello, Mr. Regan. Hiya, Pat. Thought I'd find you here, Charlie. Give me a rum. What do you have, boys? Ale. Ale. You, Charlie? Oh, uh, just have an ale. Say, boss, uh, I've been thinking about that partnership deal. I got some new ideas. Charlie, you're a fine lad and a good worker, but these things take time. Well, we so day. Could you tell me the best way to get to Broadway and Bowling Green? Well, you better take a coach. You go out this door and turn to the right, and you'll get one on the first corner. Thank you. Hey, mister, what's that you got there? The model of a boat I'm going to build. Want to build, huh? Oh, Mr. Fulton, this is Mr. Regan and Charlie Brown. Hi. How are you? Say, Mr. Regan here's got a shipyard right down the street. Maybe we could build your boat for you, eh, boss? Mind if I take a squint at it? Not at all. Hmm, it's a queer-looking thing. What's it supposed to do? It's a steamboat designed for river traffic. It'll go up or down river, wind or no wind. Even go upstream, huh? Yes. Against the Hudson River current, about four miles an hour. Against the Mississippi, about two. And without sails. But I know what makes it go. What? His finger. <laughs> <laughs> That's only on the model. I use a steam engine for power. Oh, yes. I've heard of a steam engine. I didn't know you could make a boat go with one, though. Sounds very reasonable to me. Well, I'm very glad to hear you say that. Most people think I'm crazy. Well, uh... When do you think you'll be ready to start building your boat, Mr. Fulton? Well, as soon as I've completed my financial arrangements. I'm just going down to see about them now. You mean you've got to get somebody else to put up the money for you, huh? Well, unfortunately, I'm in no position to finance it myself. I don't see why you should have any trouble raising money for a contraption like this, huh, Blackie? <laughs> a ship without sails. Go upstream as well as down. <laughs> Say, maybe it'll go uphill, too. It's got wheels. <laughs> It does sound a bit fantastic, doesn't it? If you don't mind, I'll take it now. Hey, maybe it'll fly too, eh, boss? <laughs> Why not? Let's try it. <laughs> oh. Beginner's luck. Why, you driveling young pup? I'll break you in two. Do you mind holding this for me a moment, please? Sure, Mr. Fulton. You're going to need both hands. You like to break things, don't you, Mr. Regan? Is that blood on Mr. Regan's mouth? That ain't tobacco juice. You all right, boss? I slipped on something. I'm sorry, Mr. Regan, if I've hurt you. Do you want to stop now? Stop now? I haven't started with you, you whelp! Hand. 
Nothing but an awful wallop, as far as I can say. Ah. Look out for him, boys. Look out for him. Dolly! Maggie! Yeah? Help me! Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of this. You'll get the same. Duck under, boys. Duck under. Oh, you didn't do what I told you. I presume you've had enough, Mr. Regan. How'd he get behind me so fast? Hey, boss, you all right? Hey, boss. Oh, Mr. Fulton, say you're not crazy, I'm proud of you. Have a drink on the house. Thank you. I could use a brandy very nicely. Hey, boss. Hey, you all right? Get away from me. <laughs> you're fired. Oh, now listen, boss. You're fired, I told you. Blackie. Yeah. Wait! Yeah. Give me a hand. Get out of here. Hey, now look, boss. I was. You get away from me. Come on, Blackie. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Regan. What do you want? 11 cents for one rum and two ales. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you, both of you, for your help. It would have been terrible if you'd broken my boat. I wouldn't care if he'd broken your neck. Should have done it myself, and I'd have a job now. Mr. Fulton, could I ask you a personal question? Of course. Have you got bats in your belfry? <laughs> I shouldn't be at all surprised. But there's one thing I am sane about, and that's my steamboat. Yeah. I'm sorry if you don't believe me. But this isn't something that I've dreamed up overnight. I've been working on this for years. You know who Chancellor Livingston is, don't you? You mean... You mean Mr. Robert Livingston of New York? Yes. He's been financing all my experiments. Chancellor Livingston? Yes. He, he paid for the engine and boiler that I had built in England. The, the engine isn't finished yet, but it will be by the time the hull is built. Say, why don't you let Charlie build the hull for you? He's the best ship right this side of Boston. Have you the facilities? I ain't got anything. No, not even a backbone. All you need is a shipyard and a little equipment. You can rent that and get all the men you want. Say, that's an idea. How do you feel about that, Mr. Fulton? Well, I suppose if it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have lost your job. So the least I can do is to give you the chance at another one. Well, thank you. There you are, Charlie. Hey, come on upstairs to my room with me, and we'll talk it over while I clean up a bit. Good day to you, Miss Patricia. Good day, Mr. Fulton. I'll see you after I talk, Patricia. Glad to meet you, sir. Oh, good morrow, good sir. Good morrow, good ma'am. Yes, ma'am, right away. Here you go. Chancellor will see you, This way, sir. Thank you. Ah, hello, Robert. Well, it's about time you decided to come back to America. Glad to be back, Chancellor. I have the model here. Yes, I'll put it down there. Thank you. Ah, come. Tell me about yourself. Well, there isn't very much to tell. Sit down. Thank you. I've been devoting practically all my time to the steamboat experiment. 
You received my letter? Yes. And uh, how is your experiment progressing? Very well. The uh, new boiler came over with me on the Essex, and Bolton and Watt will ship the engine as soon as it's ready. Hmm. And what about the building of the hull? Well, that's why I'm here to see you, sir. Robert, I have some bad news for you. What? The war in Europe has been most unfortunate for me. I can't advance any more money. I see. But, Chancellor, you know there'll be a fortune in this steamboat if it runs. Yes, Robert, if it runs. But I can't afford to gamble now. And you'll admit it is a gamble. I suppose it is. Do you know of anyone else you think might be interested? No, Robert, I don't. But I'll speak to my friends, I promise you that. Where are you stopping? At the Bull's Head, a, a small tavern on the waterfront. Well, Chancellor, I won't take up any more of your time. Well, good day, my lad, and good luck. I have a lot of faith in you. And if my affairs should take a turn for the better, you can count on my support. Thank you, Chancellor. I appreciate everything you've already done. Good day, sir. just left. Oh, very unusual young man, Harriet. Really? Yes. The last time I saw him, he was in Paris, building some idiotic thing he called the diving boat for Napoleon. Said it would blow up the whole British Navy. <laughs> How exciting. Yes. Next I heard, he was in London, making a gun that would shoot underwater. Said it would blow up the whole French Navy. What's his name? Robert Fulton. I've seen that name somewhere. Yes, you have. Look at that painting over the mantelpiece. The lower right-hand corner. My, an artist too. Benjamin Franklin sent him abroad to study, but he's had very little time for painting since he started inventing things. Is he, uh... No, not married. Good. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> All my life I wanted to have a shipyard of my own with my name on a sign. Yeah, big letters, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the trouble's over, Patsy girl. So you may as well name the day and get yourself measured with that bustle. Oh, but first I have to have a drawing room big enough to swish it in. Well, maybe you can trade this tavern business for a little house in Barry Lane or in Greenwich Village, huh? No, oh, no, you don't. You ain't gonna bury me out on no farm. I want a townhouse where I can entertain. Can't we live alone for a while anyway? No. We gotta have servants. Who's gonna take care of the horses? What horses? Our horses. We're gonna have horses, ain't we, for the coaches? Oh, yeah. Well, couldn't the children take care of the horses? What children? Our children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Fulton. Oh, Miss Fulton, you're back, huh? Yes, I'm back. Uh, everything's all right, isn't it? Well, uh, the Chancellor's been having a bad time of it, with the war and everything. Uh, the war? Huh? Yes. It's been quite a strain on him financially, poor fellow. Yeah, what about the money? Uh, did he... No. Well, there goes my bustle. I beg your pardon. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, pardon me. Is there a Mr. Fulton here? Yes. I'm Mr. Fulton. I have a note for you, sir, from Chancellor Livingston. Thank you. Uh, she 
instructed me to wait for an answer, sir. She? Oh, I mean the Chancellor. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, you may tell Mr. Livingston, or Miss, or is it a Miss? Yes, sir, it's a Miss. Miss Harriet Livingston, the Chancellor's niece, sir. Thank you. You may tell her, or him, that I shall be delighted to accept the invitation. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Is he going to put up the money? Mind? It's merely an invitation to dinner. I must get upstairs, see about my clothes, I haven't finished unpacking. Oh, good afternoon, Miss O'Day, and you, Charlie. Good day and good luck. Elegant manners. Ah. Uh, he has got a head in his shoulders, though. I know what's happened. The Chancellor's changed his mind. Didn't waste no time, did he? I bet he was afraid Fulton was going to raise the money somewhere else and. You'd look more natural riding that broom. <laughs> Good evening, Chancellor. Very glad you were able to come. I was afraid you might be too busy with all these various inventions. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what the world's coming to. It's a pleasure to get away from them occasionally. In fact, I've had some of my very best ideas at social functions. Let me call them. Here are two most important gentlemen. Mr. Robert Fulton, Mr. John Robbins. How do you do? Mr. Solomon Van Rensselaer. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Robert. Uh, yeah. I don't care if they are fighting a war. France and England have got to leave American ships alone. Oh, they haven't killed anyone. What's a few ships? Gentlemen, let me present Mr. Robert Fulton, Mr. John Jacob Astor. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Mr. Nicholas Roosevelt. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Washington Irving. How do you do, sir? Mr. Fulton. Mr. Rudolph Bevoort. How do you do? Mr. Fulton has just returned from Europe. Perhaps he could settle your little argument. Mr. Fulton, don't you agree that if our merchants want to risk losing their ships in foreign trade, it's their business, not the government's? Yes, yes, of, yes, of course, but uh, on the other hand, what about the freedom of the seas? Exactly! It's got to be protected. Mr. Roosevelt, I'm afraid you're much too conservative. This country is enjoying the greatest prosperity in its history. We can afford to lose a few ships. I tell you, if they don't leave our ships alone, President Jefferson will declare an embargo. Oh, ridiculous. Oh, Jefferson's got too much sense. Here, here. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Here, now, wait a minute. What has any of us got to complain of? Tell me that. Under our government, what has anybody got to find fault with? Miss Livingston, I presume? Mr. Fulton. I'm afraid your uncle was so busy introducing me to his other guests, he forgot all about presenting me to you. Oh, no. He didn't forget. He didn't? No, I'm sure he didn't. You see, just after I first saw you, I mean the time I peeped over the banister at you in the doorway, I asked him all about you. So you see, I'm sure he planned for us to meet this way. He probably thought it would be much more romantic. Your uncle is a wonderful man, Miss Livingston. Oh, yes. Everybody knows how clever Uncle Robert is. Well, you two seem to be getting along famously. Yes. Thanks to you, sir. To me? Yes, I was just telling Mr. Fulton why you didn't introduce us formally. He thinks it was a nice idea, too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't come in here. I've got to see him, I tell you. That's impossible. Let me in, it's important. No, no, no. You can't go in here, miss. Ah, oh, so he's in there, is he? Now, lady, please. What's the meaning of this? I tried to stop her, sir. I'm a personal lady friend of Robert Fulton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. I brought your boat for you. You forgot it. You shouldn't have come here. I'm very sorry. There's, there's some misunderstanding. But I, I knew you'd need your boat. If I'd needed it, I'd have brought it with me myself. Uh -huh. Is this the boat you made for Napoleon? The diving boat? Diving boat? Lady, the idea of a boat is to stay on top of the water. You can get to the bottom without a boat. <laughs> Please, Patricia, would you mind leaving and take this back with you? It's a very strange-looking affair. 
Won't you tell us about it? Are there no sales at all, Mr. Fulton? Where are the sales? What kind of a boat is this without sails? Go on, Robert. Tell them about your steamboat. Say, how did you know, mister? <laughs> oh, I know. You must be the Chancellor. Yes. Oh, we're depending on you. Won't you... Won't you sit down, Miss O'Day? Miss O'Day? Mm -hmm. May I present Miss Patricia O'Day, my landlady? And I might add, my very good friend. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Sorry I had to bust in here the way I did, but I happened to be in Mr. Fulton's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but I was only turning down the bed when I landed. <laughs> Patricia, please. Tell us about this steamboat, Mr. Fulton. I am very much interested. Oh, Mr., it's a great idea. It runs without sails, without oars, without wind, without anything. Except money, huh? Patricia, really, I didn't come here to try and raise money. You didn't? I believe I once saw a contraption like that in Paris about four years ago. Yes, I, I conducted some experiments on the Seine about that time. Oh, is that the same boat? I remember they built a big fire on the deck and smoke and flames and cinders just flew up out of the chimney. And then those big wheels started to go round and round. They made the most terrific racket. And then the most thrilling thing happened. Why? <laughs> it blew up. <laughs> Madam! I got you. Madam! Excuse me for saying so, but you're a lying old... Patricia! I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Brevoort. Please, please accept my apologies. I'm sure you'll all excuse me. Robert. <laughs> Robert. Did I say something wrong? Give me a mug of ale, Noah. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown. Say, where's Miss Pat? She's gone after Mr. Fulton to the Livingstons. What for? I don't seem like Mr. Fulton forgot his boat from Miss Pat. She's a bring it to him. Good. That little one certainly used her head. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't come any smarter than Miss Pat. Say, you got two cents change coming. One not ale for the two cents? Miss Pat won't mind you. It's practically in the family. All right, fill her up. Only trouble with Miss Pat is she don't trust people. Mm. Say, Noah, how have you been stealing that rum, anyway? Why, Mr. Brown? Oh, you're getting back kind of early, ain't you? Thanks to Patricia. Well, what's the matter? What's happened? Plenty. We were quietly sitting at the dinner when the dining room door crashes open, and here comes Patricia, carrying the boat. Well, you forgot it, didn't you? I didn't forget it. If I'd wanted the boat, I'd have taken it myself. He didn't want the boat, Charlie. He didn't? No. Well, what did you go there for? I went there for dinner. Can't you understand that? Well, can't you talk while you're eating? No, I guess it ain't polite, Charlie. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Fulton, but I was only trying to help. Help? By insulting the Chancellor's guests, by humiliating me, and by making them all think that I just went there to try and raise money for my boat? Well, didn't you? Well, excuse me, Mr. Fulton, but there's a gentleman here to see you about that boat. Who? Oh. Oh, very prosperous looking gentleman. His name was Mr. DeWitt. DeWitt Clinton? No, sir, just plain DeWitt. Well, where'd he go? What happened? Well, I told him you'd be out for the evening. He said he couldn't wait. Oh. Well, let me see. He, he left something here for you. What? He told me to give you this. A letter, huh? Now, what's it say? Have heard about your steamboat and am very much interested. We'll be at Krausmeyer's Pavilion tonight. Would like to have you and your friends join me. Bring your boat and mention my name at the door. Peter DeWitt. Well, well, what are we waiting for? Come on! Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Pardon me for mentioning it, but you're forgetting your boat again. Come on. This is it. Yeah, this is the place. Tickets? Did Mr. DeWitt leave any tickets for Robert Fulton? DeWitt? 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 Fulton? Oh, you're the man with the boat, ain't you? Yes. Just a moment. Thomas? 
This is Mr. DeWitt's party. Take good care of him. Yes, sir. We got a place for you. Right this way, sir. This way, sir. for all the festivity. Oh, it's a political rally. Yeah, some alderman spending a little of his loot to make himself popular. Oh, look, all the free ale I handed out. Ain't gonna do my business any good. Yeah? There they are. They believed it all right. Great. He brought his little steamboat with him, too. This DeWitt person must be some sort of a politician. You ain't gonna be particular where you get the money, are you? <laughs> of course not. A rough looking crowd, aren't they? Well, maybe it ain't as elegant as the Chancellor's party, but at least you won't be humiliated. I'll get you some ale while you're waiting. I know who discovered America. I'm one of the brainiest men in Park Row. I know of all people and places. But there is one thing that puzzles me so. Oh, 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 is all I'd like to know. Oh, who is the beau of the Belle of New York? Who takes a strolling down Bowling Green? Who is the beau of the Belle of New York? Mother, please tell me I'm over 16. Who buys up bustles to dress up her charms? Gets all her kisses when he's in her arms. Who is the beau of the Belle of New York? Oh, how I wish it were me. Who is the beau of the Belle of New York? Who takes a strolling down Bowling Green? Who is the Will you excuse me, please, Belle gentlemen? Where are you going? Yes, of course. To find me a sailor to dance with. Oh, no, Pat, if my feet didn't hurt, I... And I suppose you've got the gout. I'm sorry. May I have the honor? Miss Patricia. Oh, that you'll be mutual. You go ahead, I'll watch this. Oh, how I wish it were me. Who is the beau of the Bell of New York? Who takes us strolling down Bowling Green? Who is the beau of the Bell of New York? Mother, please tell me I'm over 16. Who takes her dancing, caresses her charms, thrills to her kissing when he's in her arms? Who is the beau of the Bell of New York? Find him and sing Look. him to me. Fulton's out there dancing. Oh, well, here comes Fulton now. This is uh, Mr. DeWitt, Bob. How do you do, Mr. DeWitt? My name's Fulton. I was afraid you couldn't make it. This is my associate, Mr. Wolf. How do you do? This must be a miracle boat, eh, Fulton? It's really quite simple. It's just a question of getting these paddle wheels to revolve. Oh, is that all? Well, there's practically nothing to it, Wolfie. You just got to get those wheels going. That ought to be easy. Let's see. If it comes off, is it supposed to do that? No, I, I guess it wasn't done very tight. Of course, the, the power is generated by steam. You've heard of James Watt's steam engine. Yeah, sure. Uh, these are masts, ain't they? Well, just for emergency purposes. You see, Wolfie, it's got masts, too. Them things? That won't hold no sails. Well, this is only a model, of course. Don't need no sails anyway. Hey, easy the way you handle that. Yeah, yeah, be careful, Wolfie. It ain't very strong, oh, is it? Oh, what's this thing sticking up here? That's the funnel. That's for what's the... What's the funnel? Well, that carries the smoke and cinders up from the boiler. What's the boiler? That's where the steam for the engine is generated. What's an engine? engine? Now, wait a minute. What are you trying to be, funny? What are you fellas looking for, trouble? Well, that's a fine way to talk to a financier. Just for that, you can keep your old fireboat. There! Help! 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 What did you hit Mr. DeWitt for? I didn't hit him. Yes, you did. <laughs> Everything. Wait, Charlie, look. Here he is. Hey, folks.
You all right? Yes. And you said I wouldn't be humiliated. Don't look at me. I didn't invite you here. Hey, what's the matter with you? Isn't the fight good enough for you? You want to start one of your own? Come on, get out of here. stealing my rum again. No, ma'am, I ain't been stealing no rum. Well, there's three drinks missing. That's right. That's just what I sold. Three drinks of rum, and there's the money in the cash box. Well, you've been drinking it from somewhere. I know you've been putting water in the bottle. No, ma'am, I wouldn't run good rum that way. I don't know. It tastes all right. You ain't been in that cellar, have you? I can't get in that cellar. You's got the only key. I don't know how you're doing it, but I'll catch you. Miss Pat, you is the most suspicious person. I got a present for you, Pat. Thanks. You, you'll be crazy about this if I can find it. <laughs> Has Mr. Fulton been down yet? No, ma'am. He's up in his room packing. Packing? What's the matter with her? Must be some. Never seen her refuse no present before. Who says Mr. Fulton she went upstairs to see anybody I know? No, sir, he's a gentleman. That wench can take up with the strangest people. Come in. Where are you going? To my mother's farm, Washington County, Pennsylvania. Maybe your mother could use a hired hand. It'll probably be my job. Oh, it's a shame. All them fancy clothes and fine men is going to waste on a lot of cows. Oh, Mr. Fulton! Mr. Fulton! Yes? What is it, Noah? There's a very important gentleman downstairs to see you, sir. Good morning, Chancellor. Ah, good morning, Robert. You left your things at the house last night. Thought I'd bring them down to you. That's very kind of you. You didn't have to go to all, all that trouble, though. Won't you come up? No, I haven't time. Good morning, Chancellor. Oh, good morning, Mr. Day. You didn't come down here just to give Mr. Fulton his hat, did you? Why, you're right, Mr. Day. Robert, I've been thinking about that steamboat of yours. You see? What do you honestly think its chances are for success? I've got a heavier boiler now than the one that blew up on the Seine. It should be able to stand the pressure. Hmm. I've been talking to my bankers. I find I'll be able to advance you the money. Thank you, sir. You can start building the hull immediately. I go to the bank and make the necessary arrangements. Hey, Jack, Goodbye, Robert. This calls for a celebration. Come on in and have a beaker of rum on the hut. Thank you. I'm afraid I'm too busy this morning. Some other time. Goodbye, Mr. Day. Goodbye, Chancellor. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, please don't bother. It's all settled. You're an old dear. Oh, I suppose I might as well see it through. It's a gamble, but maybe a worthy one. What you gazing at, Pat? Ain't no star shining in the daytime. Oh, mind your own business. Wait, don't you want to see what I brung you? Look, a white mousy. It's trains. It, it, it eats cheese right out of your hand. Good day, Commodore. Come back again when you can bring me a ermine. Oh. <laughs> Charlie back yet? No, he's still out rounding up his crew. Said he'd have all the men he needs by tomorrow. Good. Miss Harriet was here. She was? When? Oh, this morning with the Chancellor. Oh, really? Did you say my Harriet? Mm-hmm. 
afraid you're jumping at conclusions. Am I? Of course. Miss Livingston has been very gracious and kind. But that's not to be taken seriously. After all, I'm just a broken down artist with a head full of cogwheels and nothing in my purse. And you know what the Livingstons are. Oh, that's wonderful. What? Oh, I mean, they ain't so much. Well, see you in the morning. Are you going? Mm-hmm. Good night, Miss Patricia. Good night, Robert. Happy dreams to you. Thank you. if you didn't. attention as I should have. Oh, it's really quite simple. But of course, this boat is highly revolutionary. It is? Oh, yes. <laughs> so much so that very few people even believe it'll start. Oh, I'm sure it will. Certainly it will. You see, this isn't just a wild idea. It's me. It's everything I ever was or will be. There isn't a plank in it, not one bolt or screw that I haven't thought about. Not the slightest possibility of error that I haven't taken into account. Don't you ever think about anything else but the boat, Mr. Fulton? Why, yes, of course. But after all, the boat is... the boat. I mean, friends, girls, things like that. Do you like boats, Miss Livingston? Yes, of course, only... I'm afraid I don't understand much about them. Well, you came down here tonight just to see the boat, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes. You see, we were driving by, Uncle Robert and I, and... If you're trying to make me admit I'm a bold, brazen hussy who dragged your elderly uncle all the way down here just to see you, Mr. Fulton, you're... 
think you're right. I did. People who kiss me usually call me Harriet. People who kiss you? I mean Uncle Robert. If you do that again, Mr. Fulton, I'll probably have to start calling you Robert, too. All of you do as I tell you. Get over in the shop there and keep out of sight. All of you, I'll handle this. But don't you think... No, you two, get over there. Come on. Hurry it up, man. Wait a minute, Reagan. What do you want? We're going to launch her a little steamboat for you. I've been expecting you to try something like this, Reagan, and I'm ready for you. That boat's loaded with gunpowder. You lay a hand on it, and I'll blow up the whole lot of you. Boat and all. Ah, he's only bluffing. Don't pay no attention to him. Come on. You think I'm bluffing? You go on that boat. I didn't know there was gunpowder in that boat. It's the first I know of it, too. Listen, men. I know most of you. I've worked with you. What's this all about? Come on, speak up. You know what it's all about. I'll tell you, Charlie. It's that there steamboat you're building. It'll put us all out of work. And what about us sailors? What'll we do when there ain't no more sailing ships? Ah, so that's the story Regan's been feeding you, huh? Men, I don't know whether this steamboat of Fulton's is even going to run when we get it together. He tried it once in France and it blew up. Might do the same with us. But if it does run, it'll be the greatest thing that ever happened to you and to me and the whole country. We're building this boat for river traffic. River traffic, do you understand that? There ain't no river traffic now because a boat can only go downstream. Can't even do that if the wind's against her. But this boat, if it runs, We'll go upstream. Yes, upstream, wind and no wind. And you know what that means? It means that every little village on every little river will become a port. And every port means more jobs. They'll need more sailors, more stevedores. And that ain't all. America is just beginning to grow. The only way it can grow is west. This steamboat will open up new trails, new frontiers. Run for your lives! You're going to go to Gunpowder on the boat! Fulton, get the men out here! Get the fire buckets! Get the bodies onto the shed! Get them out of the boathouse! Come on, men! Hurry up! Come back! Come back! There's no gunpowder on the boat! He was only bluffing Regan's men! Get in there! Get some buckets! There ain't no gunpowder on that boat! I told you he's bluffing. Come on, let's go back and help put the fire out. Let it burn. He lied to you about the gunpowder, didn't he? He lied to you about anything. Come on, don't let it get away from us! Right up, man!
right back where we started. Nothing much we can salvage but the boiler. I'm terribly sorry for you, Robert. And I wish I could help you further. But I'm afraid that would be impossible. You mean... You mean you're going to drop the whole thing? Unfortunately, I have no choice. Then that is the end of it. But you can't give up now, Robert. Perhaps some of our friends will help us. I doubt it, Harriet. The war has affected most of them, as it has me. But we can try, can't we? We must. I'll see them myself. Sure, and I'll see some of my friends, too. Please, Harriet. It's very kind of you, but, but I, I can't allow you to become involved. I understand how you feel, Robert. But you mustn't be too proud about this. There are more important things at stake than money. I'll work for nothing, Bob, until we get our float. Yes, and you can forget about your lodging bill, too. Thank you, all of you, for your faith in me. Well, you'd better be going. Come along, Harriet. Goodbye, Robert. I sympathize with you, my boy, very deeply. Thank you, Chancellor. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Day. <laughs> Goodbye, Chancellor. <laughs> Come on, Harriet. Goodbye. Goodbye, Harriet. Ah, oh, cheer up, Robert. We'll pull through. If my lady would like a bath, I'd be glad to chuck her in the river. Eh. Oh, you'd make me so happy, Commodore. If you'd let me have it. You won't be sorry. Oh, Pat. I'll cut my arm off for you. Clear up the here. But you got me at a bad time. I just bought four new ferry boats and, well, my money's all tied up. Can't you borrow some money? Well, I, that's how I bought them boats. But can't you borrow some money on the boats now that you got them? No, you can't do that. Oh. Well, I guess I'll have to see my bankers. Goodbye, Commodore. Bye, Pat. Send a keg over right away. A keg? Well, that won't be enough. Been doing a big business lately. All rum, too. Glad to hear it. How much do you want? Well, could you give me a little time to pay for it? <laughs> Why? You can have all the time you want. Uh, within reason, of course. Thanks. Uh, would you send me ten kegs to start with? Ten kegs? $450? That's an awful lot of rum for a little place like yours. All right, you can keep your old hogwash. I'll get it somewhere else. Now, wait a minute, Pat. Wait a minute. Don't be so hasty. I'll send you the 10 keg. I suppose I can take back what you don't sell. Listen, Willie. I'm going out for a new business. Before I'm through, I wouldn't be surprised if I need 50 kegs. What are you going to do, float a ship with it? You guessed it, brother. you make a full star. You've been paying $45 a keg, ain't you? Yes. Well, I'm selling it for 40 cash in 10 keg lots. Where are you getting it? I ain't saying. Hey, Hilda. Come here. My wife. She is an expert. Yeah. <laughs> hey, take a swig of this. Well, taste it. 
Well? Well, it's not as good as our regular line. Oh. You carry Jamaica Four Star, don't you? Yes. Well, that's what this is. Only I'm saving you $5 a keg for cash. Let me taste our rum. Go ahead. Get it. You can't sell real four-star for that price. Oh, can I? I guess I'm just wasting my time. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Taste it. They taste a little bit alike. Can you give us a better price on 50 kegs? No, I'm look. I'm giving it away now, ain't I? Get me two fresh glasses, will you? I do. <laughs> oh. Now go on, turn around. Go on, turn around. Now, hey, taste them. <laughs> Tell me which is yours and which is mine. <laughs> Well, come on, make up your mind. Four star, all right? It'll do it every time. <laughs> 300 from DeWitt Clinton, 400 from Harriet's cousin in Albany, and we got another 300 from Nicholas Roosevelt. That's all. How much I give us? Oh, we're still short. I've begged, borrowed, done everything but steal. I don't know where we're going to get any more. How much do you need? Nearly two thousand dollars. I'll let you have it. Here's four hundred. I'll have the rest in a few days. Where'd you get it? Oh, it's part of my inheritance. What inheritance? From my grandfather. Now, what kind of blotty is this? I've known you since you were ten years old. Well, you didn't know me before that, and you didn't know my grandfather. He was... he was a nobleman. A nobleman? Mm-hmm. He was, a. Uh, a baron. Sir Patrick Michael O'Day, Baron of Dublin. Uh, that was on my mother's side. Well, I appreciate your kind offer, but I can't take your money. But why not? There are more important things at stake than money. Now look here, Pat. Enough of your Irish fairy tales. Where did you get it? I'm the one that should be asking the questions. I'm lending the money. At 15% interest. What do you think, Charlie? The whole story's a lot of twaddle, but take the money. Very well. I'll take it, Patricia, and I'll consider it a personal obligation. You've been a real friend. I can't begin to thank you. Oh, I understand just how you feel, Robert. But we'll talk about it some other time, huh? Come on, Charlie. We've got to get to work. I'll be right up. All right, now, where did you get that money? I told you. My grandmother was the Duchess of Cork. Oh, hello, Pat. 
Hi, Lily. Say, wait a minute. I'm going to need another ten kegs tomorrow. Fine, Pat, fine. You certainly must be doing a wonderful business with that place of yours. Ah, uh, the money's just rolling in, Willie. This is a queer-looking contraption they're building there. Yeah, it's a steamboat. Ain't you heard about it? Oh, yes, Wilson's folly. Imagine any fool putting his money into a thing like that. Yes, sir. Come right in. What do you have, sir? Give me your ale. One ale. That'll be three cents, sir. Have another one, mister? No, one is enough. You got two cents change coming. I'll let you have another one for the two cents. Remember Ben Franklin say a penny saved is worth two in the bush. Oh, all right. Fill her up again. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I figures when a man buys more than one ale, he's entitled to get it wholesale. That'll be all, sir? Yep. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Let me see that rum bottle. So wondering, Miss Pat, is you accusing me again, Miss no, Pat? No, just checking up, Noah. Well, she checks this right. One drink, that's five cents, and there's your money in the cash box. Almost empty, ain't it? How'd you like to have the rest of it? Well, I ain't a drinking man, but... Yeah, uh, you can have it right out of the bottle, you scurvy lying, you African dodger! The lying, thieving sot's been stealing more rum than I've been selling. Almost. Well, you'll be out of here pretty soon. Bob got a letter from England yesterday. The engine was shipped on the Enterprise. Should be in any day now. You know, Pat, I've been studying this thing. I wouldn't be surprised if someday steamboats would be running all the way across the ocean. No, I guess that wouldn't be practical. You'd have to carry a whole shipload of logs for fuel. <laughs> wouldn't have any room for cargo. No, it wouldn't be practical. Hey, Duchess, come down to Earth, will you? Come on, sit over here. I want to talk to you. No, thanks. I ain't in the mood. Say, what's come over you lately? I'm getting a little tired of all this play acting. I wish we'd get married so I could knock it out of you. Maybe we ain't getting married. No? What's the matter now? How many times have I told you the man I marry has got to be refined? All right, I'll put my shoes on. Tolly. Hmm. I hate to do this, but I think it's time you should know. A real gentleman has come into my life. Who, oh, the Chancellor? Now, listen here, Pat. I've had enough of this tomfoolery. This ain't tomfoolery, Charlie. This is love. It came on me the minute he walked in here. And it was mutual. I've seen it in his eyes. Whose eyes? Robert's, of course. Ro you mean Fulton? Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I'm afraid that ain't going to be your problem. Listen, you idiot, will you get some sense? He's in love with Miss Livingston. Oh, he's no such thing. He's just being nice to her because of her uncle. And he's a gentleman. You bet he's a gentleman. He wouldn't be wasting his time with the likes of you. Oh, he wouldn't, wouldn't he? Well, it might interest you to know that he don't care even if I am just an innkeeper. To him, I'm a woman. And he loves me. Love of a man for a maid. So you've seen all that in his eyes, eh? No, I didn't just see it in his eyes. I could tell it in his voice when he talked to me. I could feel it in his arms when he put him around me. Oh. So he's been making advances, has he? Hmm? And behind my back. Oh, now, Charlie, don't take it so hard. It ain't gonna make any difference. I, you gotta finish that boat. I've got that money invested. I'll finish the boat, all right. But when I do... Oh, I knew I could depend on you, Charlie. And I want you to know we'll always be friends. Always. You may kiss my hand. You may. Oh, give me a drink of rum. Robert, I want to. Good morning, Chancellor. Robert! Good morning, Harriet. I'm sorry to break in on you like this, but 
Have you read today's paper? Yes, Mr. Well, what is it? Read that. Hmm. I've been expecting something like this. This embargo, if it goes through, will ruin us. What do you mean, Robert? How does it concern you? Don't you see, if the President signs the embargo before my engine arrives on the Enterprise from England, we won't be able to bring it ashore. Chancellor, you have influence. Can't you do something? I'm afraid not, Robert. Oh, Uncle, you've got to. If Jefferson makes up his mind to sign that embargo, neither I nor anyone else can stop him. Robert, what are you going to do? I don't know. Comes another one of my ferries empty. No business at all. I don't know, but it seems to me Jefferson's making a big mistake. Better to lose a few ships than it is to have them all rotting away here in the harbor. It's gonna ruin the whole country, that's what it's gonna do. Ah, oh, what do I care? I got other things in my mind. The Enterprise may have learned that the harbor is closed and turned back to England. Do us any good, even if she did arrive. She couldn't unload her cargo anyway. Do you really have to have an engine to make it go? Yes, Patricia. You won't lose your money. I'll, I'll pay it back somehow. It may take a bit of time. Oh, I ain't worried about the money, Robert. As a matter of fact, I might, I might even retire. Really? Uh huh. I wonder what's got into Charlie lately. He's been deliberately avoiding me. Oh, it must be the strain. He's been working too hard. He'll get over it. There you are. Now wait a minute. Excuse me. Wait a minute. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Come here. Come here, you. 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 Pirate. You. You. You thief. You have to be more polite, Mr. Stout. And mind your language when you're talking to a lady. Lady, my eyes. She's been buying my rum from me on credit and wholesaling it for cash, for less money, and to my own customers. I'll have the law on you, I will. Uh, who poo to you? How much does she owe you? Almost $2,000. And I'll get it, or I'll send her to debtor's prison. Debtor's prison? Oh, what are you crying about? The money ain't due yet. You gave me time to pay it, didn't you? Now go on, get out of here before I bat your brains out. Go on! Imagine him coming in here and raising such a row over a little rum I borrowed. You done plenty of row raising about that little rum I borrowed. Shut up! Yes, ma'am, I shut. You shouldn't have done it, Patricia. Well, I... I was only trying to help. And I knew it meant so much to you, and... And to Charlie, I know. It was sweet of you. I'll never forget. Then I ain't sorry I done it. If you two can tear yourself apart, we've got some news for you. Yeah, the Enterprise is here! The Enterprise? The Enterprise? Yes, she's taking all water and supplies and sails back to England in the morning. I thought you'd like to know. We can't let the Enterprise go back with that engine. Our boat may run in dry dock before that embargo's lifted. We've got to get that engine off somehow. That's the spirit. That's big talk, Mr. Fulton. I suppose you're going to swim out in the dead of night and get the engine between your teeth and swim back with it. Underwater so the harbor patrol don't catch it. I'm going to get that engine off the Enterprise tonight. Come on. I understand you're for hire. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, 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 at a price. Come on. Come on, Charlie. We're going to need you. Come on. Oh, all right. I've been a fool so far. I might as well see it through. No! Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I is. Take care of the bottle. I get back. Yes, ma'am, but ain't no more rum. I know it. Drink water. That 
That's an insult. How are you, Noah? How do you do, Mr. Regan? Come right in. What do you have? Give me a mug of ale. Yes, sir. One ale. What's all the excitement about, Noah? I just saw Pat and Charlie chasing Fulton and the Commodore up the street. I don't know, Mr. Regan. Seems like they got to get something off the Enterprise. Hmm. Uh, off the Enterprise, huh? Have another ale, Mr. Regan. Only cost you two cents for the second one. Sure, fill it up again. Yes, sir. I, uh... Hope the boys are not going to try to run that embargo in the daytime. You know, this harbor patrol out here is on the lookout. No, sir. They's too smart for that. Mm. Mr. Fulton's are going out tonight and get an engine in his teeth and swim him in. Powerful swimmer, that Fulton. Powerful. Going to swim underwater engine and all. Mm. Tonight, huh? Well, I guess I'll run along, Noel. Good day. Thank you, sir. Good day, Mr. Regan. Let me see now. I don't know whether to switch to whiskey or brandy. Good chance of making it in this fog, don't you think? What's the matter with you anyway? Listen, I contracted to finish your boat for you, and I will because of Pat. Outside of that, you and me got nothing to talk about. Well, what have I done, Charlie? What's this grudge you're holding against me? You got a very convenient memory, ain't you? Well, you better brush up on it. I ain't interfering between you and Pat because, well, if she loves you, that's her business. Don't be an ass, Charlie. I'm greatly indebted to Patricia. But if you think there's anything else between us, you're out of your mind. Why, uh, shh. Quiet. You try and tell the harbor patrol where we are? Starboard. We'll head them off. Ahoy there! Head for the battery. Ahoy! Stand by for the harbor patrol! Man. Call shore. You're under arrest for violation of the Embargo Act. All right, Captain, you can put up your pistol. Climb aboard, all of you. I can take charge of his crew and bring the cargo in for you, Captain. Thank you, Regan. And follow us. All right, sir. Come on, Blackie. We demand protection for that cargo. That cargo will be safe. All right, shove off. Yes, sir. All right, men, to the harbor master's office. Sit down. Hey, look. Look what they're doing. 
Hey, leave that alone! Watch out! <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Captain. It slipped right through our fingers. Do you realize what you've done, you idiot? You've destroyed the evidence. Oh, have I? Well, those lads are friends of mine. I wouldn't want to see them get in any trouble. Hope you boys appreciate what I've done for you. You can have your boat now and take it in yourselves. Alongside, men. Does that mean we're free, Captain? Well, I suppose so. No use bringing you in without evidence. Anyway, I can always get you if I want you. It's more likely we'll be wanting you, Captain. It's all here, Pat. Good. Did you have any trouble? There was nothing to it. We laid back to the patrol, chased Charlie and Fulton in the decoy, and, well, we just circled around. Were they picked up? I don't know. Shh, quiet. Somebody's coming. Commodore, your plan was very ingenious. The man won't help his friends. What good is he? Come on, Commodore. Let's get this boat alongside the clam and get that engine up on deck. Go Wait on a minute, deck. Charlie. Patricia and I have a few things to discuss, and I think you ought to hear them. I got work to do. Show off, Commodore. All right, men. Show off. You got something to say to me, Robert? Yes. What kind of a cock and bull story have you been telling Charlie? Well, I knew he'd find out about it sooner or later, Robert, so I just told him the truth. The truth? What truth? The truth about us. I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing between us that can affect Charlie in any way. Oh, Robert, don't you know? Charlie's in love with me, too. Now, look here, Patricia. I want you to understand this. I'm not in love with you and never have been. What do you mean? Young lady, it might interest you to know that I'm in love with Harriet Livingston. Oh, that's not true. Of course it's true. Well, then why did you lead me on? Lead you on? Why, that's ridiculous. But you did. You took me in your arms and kissed me. I kissed you? I did no such thing. Well, will you... You put your cheek next to mine. The day I gave you the money and... How about all the other times we've been together? What other times? What about the time you showed me the boat and the time we talked about Harriet? What did you say then? Well, I'm sure I told you she was very lovely. Well, you, you didn't say you were in love with her. Now, see here, Patricia. Don't be an idiot and come to your senses. You've caused a lot of trouble between me and Charlie, and it's got to stop. I still say you're letting me on. I'm sorry if you misunderstood my attitude, but I assure you that I had no intention to be anything but grateful to you for the help you've given me. Hmm. That's what a girl gets for trusting a gentleman. From now on, Mr. Fulton, our relationship is strictly business. Well, I've got to go to work. Good night, Patricia. Oh, I hope your old boat blows up. Boys, get that boat back to the landing and get ready for the first trip. What are you hanging around for, Pat? Charlie wants to take me home. Oh, he'll be working on that engine. Come on with me in one of my boats and we'll take the long way around. Can I trust you, Commodore? No. That's all I wanted to know. Goodbye. Get the holder over in the center of the tent. Charlie, I've just had a little talk with the... Save your breath. Take it away! Fulton's Folly sails tomorrow. Steamboat will attempt run against North River Current. Mr. Fulton's ingenious steamboat, which has been intriguing our local citizenry, will receive its first test tomorrow morning. 
sightseers are warned to keep at a safe distance. Fire brigades and harbor patrol boats have been ordered to stand by and be prepared to rescue the crew in case of emergency. The newspaper seems a bit skeptical, doesn't it? The boat will go. I'm sure it will. Now, oh, Harriet, I have faith in it, too. But if anything should go wrong, you mustn't take it too hard. Nothing will go wrong. Robert is confident. Yes, I know. But Robert was equally confident in Paris when the boiler blew up. I hope nothing happens here. But if anything should, I don't want you to be too disappointed. I wish it were over. Poor Robert. He's hardly slept a wink since that engine arrived. More wood, sir? Yes, more wood. Ice face water, man. Right the line. It's mighty fine. Who does Fulton think he's fooling with all this rumpus? I suppose he fished that engine out of the harbor. You mean that case of bricks you heaved overboard? Bricks? Yeah, maybe you'd like to dive in and see. No, thank you. Well, good morning, Miss O'Day. Ah, good morning, Chancellor. <laughs> Hello. How do you do? Robert has told me all about you, Miss O'Day. Oh, he has, has he? It's been wonderful of you and Charlie to stand by him the way you have. We'll never forget it. And I'd like to be your friend, if you'll let me. Well, I... I was afraid you weren't coming to see us all. Do you think I could possibly stay away? Why, Patricia, I didn't recognize you for a moment. Oh, it's nothing. Just a little thing my modiste threw together. I'm sorry if I was rude the other night. Rude? Oh, that. <laughs> Hope you didn't take me seriously. <laughs> Good luck, Robert. Thank you, Chancellor. I'll need it. Good morrow, Charlie. Well, that ain't the Queen. And in full regalia. Hey, where are you going? I'm going along. You're doing no such thing. This water might blow up. Oh, let it blow. Now, Patricia, wait a minute. Listen, I gotta protect my investment, don't I? Well, so do I. Robert, I'm going too. Hey, Harriet, I can't let you do that. Just a minute. I have a little invested in this thing, too. I suggest that all the investors go. That's a very good idea. If you insist, all right. But I warn you, it's going to be much safer on shore. Oh. Come back, Harry. You've got no money invested in this boat, and you can't swim. Oh, I can too. Oh. Oh. Looks like we're ready. Might as well start. All right, Captain. We're. Ready to shove off. Put some more wood in the fire. Stand by. Let's go forward. All clear forward. Well. All right. Down. Yeah, give him an hour. 
Get, get me one of those paper pins. Paper pins? Where, sir? Up on the cylinder head where you found the hammer. More wood in the fire. More wood, sir? Yes, more wood. There's a lot of steam in that boiler now, sir. I'm afraid it's going to blow up. Well, I'm not afraid. Put some more wood in the fire. Yes, sir.
Ask me first. Yeah, I suppose I might as well get used to it. Miss O'Day, may I have the pleasure? Oh, Mr. Brown, the pleasure will be mutual. <laughs> 